my dearest husband, I'm writing to inform you that I've made it to California. I was so blown away by the cinematography and just the feeling of, of movement and motion that was constantly being captured through the wind, you know, and her hair blowing and, you know, the constantly moving environment around her. Uh, I thought the voiceover was really great as well. And the verbiage she was using, um, you know, and the costuming really helped to ground us in this time period of the 1900s as well, which I thought was great um, being a period piece. Uh, lastly, I loved the way that we ended kind of with the sun setting and the way that it created this kind of feeling of finality and saying goodbye that really matched the theme of the film perfectly and just left us with this sense of like mournfulness but also the sense that um she was going to get the closure you know that she needed from this and keep moving forward i thought it was just really beautifully done vividly rich and tangible um i think during a period is always difficult because um you know you want to make sure it's accurate but i think setting this in the outdoors it really played into that and you really got a sense that she's connected and, and it would have stood you know, whether this is 2022 or 100 years ago. Um, yeah, the landscape was just beautiful. And the cinematog cinematography definitely um, appreciated it. And, and I think all the shots just let the audience soak in how beautiful it was. And, and, and um, the, you know, the camera appreciated the nature and the nature, nature appreciated the camera too. The costumes were um, amazing, so beautiful. Um, and just fit right in with uh, the setting. And I think uh, the actor's narration was great. I was really impressed by um, how clear uh, the sound quality was and just how beautiful it was to hear that over the beautiful background. I really enjoyed her voiceover as she reads the letter she writes to her husband. Her voice is full of love and courage and the largely piano soundtrack under the action really captures the heartfelt emotions of the piece. What really stands out for me in this one is the lovely cinematography of the vistas of California by the sea and the valleys full of sun and wildflowers. Simply gorgeous. Uh, doing a period piece can be really overwhelming uh, with just the attention to detail and the cost. And it's all presented here really smartly. Um, we have our, our single actor and her wardrobe, which looks fantastic. Um, and then because they rely heavily on the great outdoors, which haven't necessarily changed a lot in 110 years, um, when you're really out there with nature, it just uh, puts us in that time frame and just makes it all very believable. The performance was great. The narration sounded just perfect, um, both in its delivery uh, and sound quality, and all the um, sound actually was really good. The uh, Just the vivid quality of the cinematography was fantastic. A bold choice to tell a love story surrounding the Titanic, especially when we enter the story with a wide shot of what seems like an elderly woman looking at this body of water from the hilltops. I don't even have to point out exactly where my mind goes to from here. We find the protagonist writing a letter to her husband who has arranged to make a new life on the California coast. Although we do receive this telling action, it is paired with visuals um, to, as to what the message is pertaining to. Um, it's pretty clear that this character is lost. She gives us a sense of dear John, in a sense. Uh, she is in a rebuilding period, and we can see her journey exist in this contrast of beauty. She has lost her child, for when we realized the last time she saw her husband was when she, you know, she was escaping the crisis. And the audience can connect and sympathize with this, this stream of you know, excruciating loss that she's trying to rebuild from. She puts her message in a bottle, tossing it into the body of water where she knows, you know, or believes that's where his spirit carries on. And this body of water is what she has as this last strong, memorable connection with him and hoping to carry on the legacy of the life that they dreamed of. After all this time they've spent talking about it, now she's going to do it in his honor. I thought that um, the final reveal of your character taking the letter and, you know, rolling it up into the bottle because, you know, her husband went down aboard the ship uh, was just a, a, a nice 
not exactly unexpected, but still sort of beautiful in its inevitability moment. Um, I thought this was, you know, really beautifully shot, um, especially a lot of the landscapes. And I thought that uh, the costuming was simple, but effective and established the period well. Um, I thought the the dialogue itself was very well written and very moving, and I yeah I thought all the uh, the images that you chose to settle on really did a nice job of uh, I guess bringing a, a sort of sense of melancholy uh, to the piece. I don't think anyone's ever thought of doing a film about the aftermath of the Titanic. Most films around the Titanic deal with the actual events where it's like they kind of want to see, say, the ship sinks, people get off, but they don't really want to deal with the trauma that happened afterwards. These women lost their husbands. Some of them were single moms. They, uh, This woman mentioned she lost her husband and her unborn child. Two devastating losses for her. But that she will find the strength to live, even though she really doesn't want to. She want, would rather join him. This shows exactly what a trauma can do to a person. And to tell it through the form of a letter was a spark of creative genius.